Shalom to the nation of Israel. This is Barazal coming in spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai Bahashim, Recha Kodash. Double honors to the Apostles of Great Millstone and to the hopeful elect pushing his word in truth and sincerity across the four corners of the earth. Now, this lesson is going to be titled No Hope for Esau. All right, Esau is done. <laughs> right? No, like he's just done. There's no way you're getting out of your situation. Because there was a video, I think it was Apostle Tahar. Um, I believe it, maybe it was Apostle Gabar. But he was lying back enough another video. Actually, it wasn't Apostle Gabar, it was another brother from a different camp. But he was lying back in another video, and these Edomites came to, uh, I think it was the end of a camp. They were doing camp, and they came to the end of the camp, and they were asking questions, right? Basically, they're looking for hope. They're looking for a way in. To the, to the salvation of Israel, right? In a way out of their destruction. But, the, the, you know, they went into the video, their, their brothers were teaching them basically that, you know, this is what the scripture is saying, this is what, this is what it says, so this is what it is, right? And the fact that, you know, there's no hope for Esau, which is the point. It doesn't matter how many times you try to go read the scriptures and come back with your, your questions and whatever, like there's no hope, right? Because they always try to slip into the Gentiles Right with the Gentiles, but you know, we already know what that's about. So enough talking. Let's get started. Romans nine and thirteen, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. It's pretty straightforward, <laughs> you know. He loves Jacob. Jacob, you know, Yahweh loves Jacob, and he hates Esau. He hates Esau, like hates. So the word hate. Just get the etymology of the word so you get a better picture. Hate, uh, regard with extreme ill will. So the Most High, Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, has, you know, regards Esau with extreme ill will, right? Have a passionate aversion to, treat as enemy. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, sorrow, hatred, grief, sorrow, calamity, uh, Trouble, right? Okay, and it even goes down here. Spite, envy, malice, hostility. So this is what the Yahweh Shemoshai has for Esau. This is, there's nothing good here, and you, th and this is the 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 word that he used. But yet these Edomites think they still have a way. How they have a way to be saved? How he says he hates you. He hates you. Okay, <laughs> there's no way out. There's only there's no way into the salvation. The only way you're you're leaving this place is in that in that in those fires, right? Either the beams from the chariots or the nuclear uh, flame from the the missiles. And then after that, you're gonna go into slavery, right? Because you're still in the, they're not done yet. We're not done there. After that, you're going to slavery, right? So now we're going to Obadiah. We'll start from one. The vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord Yahweh concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from the Lord Yahweh, and, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen, thou art greatly despised. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, thou that dwells in the cliffs of the rocks. And you know the Edomites, they, they dwelt in the cliffs of the rocks, hence where they got the name Caucasians, because they were living in the Caucasus Mountains, right? That's one area, you know, but they like to live in rocks, like the caveman. That's who the caveman is, Esau, Edom, right? The pride of thine heart have deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the cliffs of the rocks, whose habitation is high, thus saith in his heart. And if you went to those areas, I believe it's not the Caucasus Mountains, the different area, um, but they basically, they live in the, the, I just can't remember their name right now. They live in the mountains and you can see they live high in the mountains. Like there's like holes in the mountains, right? And who does that? You got the same thing nowadays. We have uh, skyscrapers. We have these tall buildings. It's the same idea. They love, they like living in high uh, buildings, high uh, areas, right? Right? The scriptures don't lie. It says, the pride of thine heart has deceived thee, thou that dwells in the clefts of the rocks, whose habitation is high. Right? So they literally lived in a high habitation. And right now they're doing the same thing. Right? Um, Thus saith in his heart, 
who shall bring me down to the ground? So that's what Esau Edom, that's what you always hear from every uh, empire where he was the, the Greeks, the, the, the Romans, right? The pagan Rome, a, a papal Rome, the Holy Roman Empire. And then you have America and all these other, uh, other factions of the, 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 the Roman, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Roman kingdom, right? Or the American kingdom. All these Edomites, they have the same pride. Like, no one's going to take them down. No one's going to take them down. No one can stop us. And right now, it's America, right? America has that pride. No one can stop them. But that's changing. You can see what's happening around on, on the planet now. Right? Things are changing. Right? It's so a prophecies. Right? Verse 4. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and it says the eagle because that's that, the animal. That's how you know who they are from the Greeks till now. Right? And thou, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, right? And now they're going into space. Thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord Yahweh. If thieves came to thee, if robbers by night, how art thou cut off? Would they not have stolen till they had enough? If the grape gatherers came to thee, would they not leave some grapes? How are the things of Esau searched out? How are, how are his hidden things sought up? All the men of the confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. Shall I not in that day, say the Lord, Yahweh, even destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of the Mount of Esau? Right? And this is all happening right now. Right? But the point is, I'm going to get to the point. Um... Okay, we can just go to nine. Uh, and the mighty men of uh, and slack and thy mighty men, O Teman, shall be dismayed, to the end that every one of the mount of Esau shall may be cut off by slaughter, for thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shall be cut off forever. So that's the point, right? That's the main point. So because um, what they did to us, but basically what Esau did to Jacob, right? You know, now, this is the judgment from back then till now. And you really can go even go back to Cain and Abel. Right? It's the same spirits. Same story. Right? But because of what they did, and what they did since then, now all that wickedness that they've been doing, that's been piling up over all those generations, is now finally been ready to be uh, reaped, so to speak. Or that judgment is ready, finally ready to be uh, put down on them. Right? And it says, and thou shalt be cut off forever. So forever. They're going to be cut off forever. Right? And it's also said in verse 9, uh, and, the, and thy mighty men, O Teman, shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the Mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. So there's going to be a slaughter against them. Right? So it's, it, like, the, the, with these things that are in the, pro the scriptures, the prophecies, I don't know why... <laughs> Esau thinks that he has a way out. Right? And they know that they're Edomites too. They know. At this point, they know. They know they're Edomites. Second Ezra 6 and 9. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So Esau is the end of the world. Right? Esau's world is going to end. This world that Esau has created, this kingdom, is going to end. With Esau on top. Right? He's the one that's ruling. And Jacob is the beginning of it that follow him. So Jacob is going to be following, the, the next kingdom that's following is going to be uh, uh, Jacob's kingdom, Israel's kingdom. Right? And that's the everlasting kingdom. That's never going to end. Right? Under Yahweh, under Yahweh Shem Yahushai, David, and the apostles, and the, the elect. Right? But we're going to be ruling. But the point is, is that Esau, there's no, there's no way out. Like, you're You're done. <laughs> You're done. As you can see, the tides are, shift, are shifting. You know, we're coming into power because we're prophesying. We're putting out the prophecies, the scriptures, and they're coming down. Right? It's a spiritual thing. But physically, it's manifesting with them in their, in their kingdom. It's coming down. It's crumbling. Right? So the more we push these prophecies, the more, the more we push the word, the more the prophecies are going to uh, unfold and unravel. Right? 
And back to what I was saying, there's no hope for Esau. You're not getting out, right? You have to pay your judgment for everything you did. You can't run from judgment, man. Just like when, when Esau, uh, so, oh, right, right, wow, okay, there we go. Hebrews 12 and 16. Least there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. So there you go. I was just literally going to say that. That's the spirit. So he sold, his, he sold his birthright for a morsel of meat. A morsel of meat. He sold his birthright. And the blessing. Right? Then, then after the blessing. Because he was impatient. Right? Because he's impatient. All from being, because you know, he was impatient. He didn't want to wait. And it, because he's wicked too. Like, just because you're impatient, you're going to eat raw meat? That shows you the spirit that these people have. Right? Because they don't want to wait. They don't want to wait for anything. And you can see they don't want to wait for anything. They just want to take right now. They want to take it right now. Take it right now. That's why they cause all these wars, everything. They just go and take it. They don't want to wait. Right? They don't want to suffer. They don't want to endure. It's all about right now, right now, right now. Well, right now, you're going to get this judgment. Judgment judgment's coming for you right now. Right? That's a judgment. You can't escape that judgment. And actually, I should slack. I should be saying the judgment's not coming right now. It's coming. The thing is, like, and that's the thing. They have to wait and suffer. The most high <laughs> slack. So the most high is making them suffer <laughs> for the judgment that they already know that's coming. And they can't escape it. So that's, that's more, that's, and that's worse. If you know about torture, if you watch these movies, the best torturers are the ones that slow, do everything slow. They torture the person slow, right? It's not the quick ones. It's the slow ones. They have to endure and they have to suffer. The ones that make people suffer. So that's what's happening. Most sides making these people suffer spiritually. We're just making them bug out, right? Because he already knows that they don't, they don't have the ability to suffer, right? They're impatient people. Like it says right here, lest there be any fornicator or profane person uh, as Esau, who, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright, right? He didn't want to suffer and wait and be a little bit hungry and wait for the food to cook. No, he's like, I want it right now. Well, hey, you're not getting this judgment right now, but you know the judgment's coming and you can't escape it. <laughs> for ye know that, for ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, exactly, he would have just inherited he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he saw it carefully with tears. And that's what Esau is doing right now. He's trying to repent, but there is no place for, place for repentance for him. Right? You can't repent. Right? The only way, you're, the only way out for you is through the missiles, through that, the, the beams of the chariots. And after, for the, you know, we take you and put you into slavery. We build up our kingdom, and after we, and then after, I'll even talk about the next part. That's coming next. That's coming next. <laughs> that's funny. And uh, the last one, he's going to talk about the last thing that's going to happen to them. So Obadiah again, we're going to start at 15. For the day of the Lord, Yahweh is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. So what they did to us is going to be done unto them. Double. Right? They're going to get it worse. And righteousness, we're gonna get worse. That reward should return upon thy own head. So these these Edomites went and did all this wickedness, but now they don't want to. Now they, they don't want to get the judgment for it. It's like, oh well, hey, it's all love, right? Just forgive and forget. You know, we're all brothers, right? We're all friends. No, 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 we're not friends. We're not. You're not friends. You're good. We want judgment. We want our our recompense, right, for what you did to us. And, you know, the elders always talk about in camp where it's like, at the end of the day, like, we have to remember that Israel did do a lot. We did a lot of stuff to Is uh, Edom, Is Slav. We did a lot of the stuff to Esau too, right? It wasn't that Esau was just attacking us and did all the wickedness to us. We never did anything to them. No, we did shit to them too. But the point is that they started it. They started this whole, they just started this whole blood feud. It was them. They made the first blow for no reason. It really started with Cain and Abel, Right? We started with Cain and Abel, right? Cain got in, God with Cain got mad at Abel, right, and killed his brother because he did the right thing and gave his 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 uh his meat to the Lord for the sacrifice, and Cain gave fruit, and then he got mad. He got mad and killed his brother. Right, that's where it all started. So Cain was the first murderer on the planet. He started all of this. So. 
because he started all this, we're going to end it. Like the scripture said, Esau is the, 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 uh, Esau is the end of it, uh, end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of the fall with. Right? You know? So he started it. He started it, but we're going to end it. Because his kingdom is going to end by us the, delivering that last blow. And when I say us, I mean really Yahweh Shai, but I mean Israel, but Yahweh Shai is going to come deliver that last blow and destroy his kingdom. Right? So I'll read it again. For the day of the Lord Yahweh is near upon all the heathen, as thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. For as ye have drunk, have drunk upon my holy mountain, which is Israel, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink, and they shall swallow down, and they shall be as though they had not been. Right? So that even includes other heathens. The heathens are going to catch judgment too. But it's not going to be like what Esau is going to get. Esau's getting the, the top, the top, the creme de la creme of, of judgment. Right? But the other heathens are going to get judgment too, because they have to pay too. Verse 17, but upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. So only Zion, which is Israel, right, is going to be delivered. And more importantly, that's going to be the elect and the one-third. They're the ones that are going to be delivered. Everyone else is going to be destroyed. The two-thirds are going to be destroyed. The two-thirds are going to come back through the elect and the one-third, right? And there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. And Esau is going to be a possession unto us, because we're going to have them in slavery, including all the riches and, and, and stuff we're going to get, which were originally our riches, we're going to get those back, but including we're going to get slaves because we need slaves. To be blessed, you have to have slaves. That's what the word blessed means, right? So we're going to have slaves, and we're going to need those slaves to build our kingdom back up because these damn devils destroyed it, right? And it, well, it's going to be destroyed. Right now, spiritually, it's destroyed, but it's going to be physically destroyed too. So we're going to need it build, built back up again because it needs to be cleansed. Because it just, it's just filthy now. Uh, last verse, and this is the point, eight, verse 18, And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble. So Esau is the stubble that's going to be burnt up with the flame and the fire. And they shall kindle in them and devour them, and they shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord has spoken it. Right? Right? So that's the point. That they're going to be destroyed. They're going to be burnt up. They're going to be burnt up. So there's no way out. You're not escaping your judgment, Esau. And the whole joke is the Most High is going to make you wait for it. He's going to make you suffer. You have to suffer and wait for something that you can't escape. <laughs> oh, boy. Anyways, uh, I hope this lesson was edifying to the hopeful elect that pushes word and truth across the four corners of the earth. And shalom until next time.